Good afternoon. Time to wrap it up for October 29th, 2014. What a day we've had. QE3 rallied the markets from March of 2009. QE1, 2, and 3, that is. And QE3 is officially over as of Friday. No more outright Fed support for the market. Um, <clears throat> we're going to see who blinks first. Uh, a lot of people say the economy is soft and getting softer. The Fed's going to have to blink. The Fed's saying the economy is strong and getting stronger. So time will tell. But the whole investment and trading strategy that made you money up until October 13th, excuse me, October 31st, 2014, is Fed, outright Fed support of the market, and that has now gone. Only one dissenting Fed um, vote. Okay, we started out this morning. Uh, we basically saw, if I can find my mouse, there it is, uh, resistance at 80 to 85 and support at 70 to 75. And uh, the last time you had a chance to get long in the 75 area, and you couldn't have, it was at 76.50 to 78. It was right here before the day session opened. Market just blew right through our first resistance area, the 80 to 82. Had one trade above 85 where they got stops, and then the market just slowly started to notch down. I uh, thought the market would be on hold for the FOMC announcement. Uh, the market drifted lower into the FOMC announcement. This is when the news hit. And after the news, we said resistance was 72 to 75. There's your high at 75, <clears throat> a couple of sells after the news is hit, and the market is working its way down. So the ammunition to support the market comes, <clears throat> as it always does, from the 50-lot trader. And right here we're seeing short covering supporting the market. So uh, this morning, a uh, couple of um, small trades that would have made you some money. Uh, this was a winner. From there to there, this is a winner. On the buy side, that was a winner. But you had to have been in well before the market opened. So um, then the Fed hits. This is a winner. But you have to be really, really nimble. You can't stick around for long. Right here, this is a small winner. And this is a small winner. So 60, we're back to our 60 to 62, where we were trying to buy it the other day. Looking at the F1 screen, which will be wide, have lots of range for today. Higher low, higher high, and we're back to where we were. This 55 area, I think, is the tipping point, 55, 56. As long as we can stay above that, this market can trade higher. Uh, we're going to see who blinks first, those that are selling stocks and index futures or the Fed, who comes back in and supports the market. Uh, the Fed doesn't care about the trading community. The Fed uh, will hurt small individual traders, but the Fed does care about the banking system, about the stock market, and about um, uh, this administration's attempts to prop up the economy and shore things up. So got to please your boys, your, vo <laughs> your boss when all is said and done. It's no different on the government side than it is on ours. So a higher high, higher low, this market can trade higher um, if support holds. Looking at the F2 screen, got this pretty clean break at 75. Uh, we said if the market failed, to take out and hold 75. And you can see right in here that it was a sell. Uh, we also have our spill from 72, so this 72 to 75 is prime sell territory. So selling failure to take out 72 to 75 works. Uh, the next trade will be the uh, selling that started at 80. So 79 to 81 will be sell two. I, I really think if we get through 75, you don't want to be short. Uh, this market's going to run for uh, not for fundamental reasons, but for, for the obvious. On the buy side, we're back down to our 60 to 62. And then 55.57. Uh, as you well know, based on fundamental analysis, I'm more comfortable on the short side. But having said that, uh, you just have to 
trade what you see, not what you believe. It gives us great trades, but uh, there it's not 100% perfect. I know I'm working on it. But it, it, uh, I'm pretty consistent over time. So that's it for the E-mini. Uh, the situation is going to be the same. If I were um, looking at um, my investments right now, I would tend towards risk off, which would mean uh, gold, the treasuries would be of more uh, interest to me than uh, the stock markets. I think the market's trying to tell us that, but uh, longer term, but we'll just have to see. We've got pretty good support down here at 2520. Uh, last rotate down here stopped at 2604. The low today was 2606. So this four to six area right in here is pretty good support. Uh, this low right here is in the 12 area. 8 to 12 is pretty good resistance. So as long as we stay below 8 to 12, this market can sell. And we're currently at 26.16, quite a bit away from it. There's 26.24. So this one says you're a seller. Looking at the F2 screening, now this market has rejected prices beneath 11, um, and we have we're back up here to our 26, 24, 28 area. Last rotate up in K period stopped at uh, 21, and M period it's at 17 and a half. So, selling failure to take out 16 to 20. And if the E-mini is selling, we do not want to be short. And then our 23 to 27 area will be sell too. On the buy side, uh, 5 to 9, we're going to give it a little bit of room, but may take 13s to get in. Don't know exactly where support is. But I'd be a little more inclined to buy this because of the 7-year than to sell it. But my trade, I think, is to find a place to get long. So we're going to put a, because of the seven year, we're going to put question mark by 13. And uh, we'll leave five to nine up. The knob spread widened by quite a bit. Uh, the, and again, eventually these bond traders are proven right. Um, uh, the, as far as which way the economy is going in the bond market, it's telling you that the economy is weakening. I hope the Fed is right. I mean, I really just don't think we can handle another recession. The Fed's pretty well shot a lot of major bullets already. Okay, I'm going to do an L split here. The knob spread's telling us is that the economy is not as strong as the world, as the Fed says it is. So uh, we're at 15. We're going to sell failure to take out um, 19 to 20, say 20 to 24. And if the E-mini is selling we really do not want to be short than 27 to 31 for sell two on the buy side uh, we broke it out here at eight we're at 14 so five to nine and again it may take a 13 it just depends on what the mini is going to do and then 29 to one there's about 15 handles 15 points in the knob spread now it's come up quite a bit Okay, taking a look at gold. Gold got hit pretty good today. Uh, it's still selling. Uh, we've liked the short side of the market. Um, 
So we've got our 2705 to uh, 7, which is where we have him. I, I don't think that what the Fed said today uh, is a huge negative uh, for gold if the stock market starts to sell. If the stock market holds in, then it is because the Fed is printing less money um, than they would have been if the QE3 uh, continues in 1,200 plus or minus. So the market is selling, and justifiably so, off the fact that the Fed is printing less money. And it's been down. So stops below 1,200 is probably where the target is. But our first little band of support is going to be 5 to 7. On the resistance side, uh, we got this rotate up to 15. So 13 to 15, sell 1. Obviously, you got to get to 10 to do that. And then the second area is going to be 17 to 20 for sell 2. So gold did sell for the right reasons. And now it gets down to uh, whether the bottom falls out of the E-mini or not. And if it doesn't, then gold can continue to sell. And like it was last time, we're looking for the uh, 1185 area, give or take. Got to get through 1200 first, but that's not that far away and as far as gold goes. Okay, crude. Um, again, crude just does its own thing. And it did sell off the FOMC news. Uh, but the idea that the labor force is increasing, people are going back to work, more people driving more miles, demand is getting bigger. I got, after the selling, um, got us back up to this 82 and a quarter area. So this is very, very we're inside the value area right now, so selling 50s to 75s may take a quarter to get in, but we're going to try for higher than 83, 83 and a quarter for sell two. On the buy side, um, I'll play 81.50 to 75. The initial reaction was down. And 81 even, 81 and a quarter for buy two. And last but not least, uh, the euro just got slammed. Um, the Fed is printing less money. The European Union is getting ready to print more. Sell the euro. Let's go back and change this to a nickel. Um, here's the news. Market came off in F period and it started down. So we've got this low over here at 2618. Their actual low is 25. If we get through 126 even, I think we're headed lower. So uh, the market is definitely in a sell mode and for the right reasons. And so we can down here and look, uh, it's 25, oh, say 25 even, stops below 125 is the trading target. Uh, 2580 is the next low volume number, so stops below. 126 is where I think the market is headed. So we'll make um, 15 to 25 by one. And I really don't like the long side at all. I'm just more interested in being short. And then our 75 plus or minus for buy two. Uh, we want to sell 50 to 60. And then our um, 85 to 95 for sell two. 
Tomorrow's news, jobless claims, 285. Advanced GDP, 3.0. So GDP news tomorrow could uh, shake things up. So we do have a little news tomorrow, plus the seven-year auction. So the Fed will be active once again, moving seven-year paper. Folks, that's it for October the 29th, 2014. I'll see you bright and early in the a.m. Hope you have a great evening. I'm going to be pulling for Kansas City, seeing how they haven't won a World Series since 1985. Plus, they're closer to us in San Francisco. I really don't watch a lot of baseball. so should be a good game. They have been. Uh, wh whoever's pitcher has been on has won, as is normally the case in baseball. So you all have a great evening. I'll see you in the morning.